it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. We learned previously that plant auxins regulate stem or shoot elongation and also root growth. We also learned that their effects are dependent on concentrations. This experiment aims to look at how different concentrations of the growth regulator indole acetic acid or IAA affects plant growth. This experiment can be broken down into two separate parts. Part 1, preparing different concentrations of the IAA, and Part 2, growing seeds in different concentrations of IAA. In Part 1 of this experiment, we prepare different concentrations of the IAA solution. We do this through serial dilution, where each concentration is 10 times more dilute than the previous one. In part two, the effect of these concentrations are used on the roots and shoots of seedlings and the effect on their growth is compared to a control. So let's look at part one, preparing the IAA concentrations. Label six tubes, 10 to the power of two ppm, 10 to the power of one ppm, one ppm, 10 to the minus one ppm, 10 to the minus two ppm, and 10 to the minus three ppm. And then label a seventh test tube as the control. PPM stands for parts per million and it's just a unit of concentration for really small amounts. Using a syringe or a pipette, place 10 cm cubed of the 10 to the power of 2 ppm IAA solution into the tube labelled 10 to the power of 2 ppm. Add 9 cm cubed of distilled water into tubes 2 to 6. Using a syringe, take 1 cm cubed of the IAA solution from tube 1, that's the 10 to the power of 2 ppm, and add to the tube label 10 to the 1 ppm. Using a different syringe, and take 1 cm cubed from tube 2, 10 to the 1 ppm, and add to tube 3, labelled 1 ppm. Repeat this serial dilution up as far as tube 6, using a different syringe each time. Take 1 cm cubed from tube 6, labelled 10 to the minus 3 ppm, and dispose of the 1 cm cubed down the sink. Each tube should now contain 9 cm cubed of IAA solution, with each tube being 10 times more dilute than its precursor. Having 9 cm cubed of solution in each tube helps to make this a fair test. Fill the 7th tube, or control, with 9 cm cubed of distilled water. This is what we are going to compare our experiment to. Part 2. Growing the seeds in different IAA concentrations. Label six Petri dishes with the concentrations from each tube and label another one the control. Line the base of each Petri dish with an acetate grid sheet. This will make measuring the roots and shoots much easier as the squares are all the same size, usually one millimeter in length. Place five radish seeds along the middle line of the acetate grid sheet in each Petri dish. Five seeds is enough seeds to calculate the average growth in each dish and it also allows for the eventuality of one or two seeds failing to germinate. Cover the seeds with filter paper and then add two centimetres cubed of IAA solution from each test tube to the filter paper in the matching Petri dish. Dampening the filter paper helps the seeds stay in place. Cover the filter paper with cotton wool and pour the remaining solution on the cotton wool. This ensures that all seeds are in contact with the IAA solution. Seal each dish with tape and leave them on their sides. This allows the radicals to grow straight down, which makes them easier to measure. Place the dishes in an incubator of 25 degrees Celsius for three days. 25 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature for plant growth and three days gives sufficient time for growth to take place. After three days, return to the Petri dishes and measure the lengths of roots and shoots of the seedling in each dish. For each dish, calculate the total length of all shoots and roots and then find the average. Record your results in a table similar to the one below. So on to expected results and conclusions now. The roots and shoots in the control dish are seen to have grown as they produce their own IAA. And then we compare the growth of the seedlings in the other dishes to the growth of the seedlings in the control dish. Low concentrations of IAA stimulate root growth, but they do not affect the growth of the shoot. 
Higher concentrations of IAA stimulate shoot growth and inhibit or stop root growth. And very high concentrations of IAA inhibit or stop the growth of both roots and shoots. Therefore, we can conclude that different concentrations of IAA have different effects on the roots and shoots of a plant. Therefore, we can say that IAA is concentration dependent. Here's what you usually need to be able to do. Describe how to investigate the effect of IAA growth regulator on plant tissue. 